All right, we are still talking about deconstructing faith, and today we are centering on another problem that comes up when you are deconstructing it. Yeah, you heard us. The faith, deconstructing it. (laughs) And we're not trying to trivialize anybody's journey if they've deconstructed their faith or have walked through this. We're not trying to minimize anyone's personal pain or any of that stuff. Right. We just really feel like it's necessary for us to shed some light in this conversation because it really does go a lot deeper than just walking away from. Um, the Bible. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, if you missed it, last week we talked about uh, the personal problem with deconstructing faith. And so uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to pause this. You're going to click right around this area-ish. And um, you're going to want to go back and watch that. And then come back here as we dive in today and we talk about the science problem. So let's get to it. Hey, we are your hosts, Nick Smith and Kylie Joe Smith. And today we are talking all about the science problem. And before we get to that, we just want to say thank you so much to our inner circle. Inner circle, what up? You have continued to support this podcast and make it possible every single week. And actually Cheers with the you. inner circle, we plan on discussing something that we touched on in the last episode, which was, what was it? Frustration. There it was. <laughs> <laughs> the thing. Like, it was a thing. It was, it was a big a, deal. We talked about um, it. It was, but, it was stuff. Right. So we want to talk about the frustration uh, tolerance. Mm-hmm. That How we, to build that we frustration all tolerance. Yes. And in particular, this is something that comes up with parenting. That's right. I know this is an issue that we have. A lot of us have it. We get frustrated with it. Um, I'm uh, frustrated that you bring that up right now. <laughs> um, but how do we teach our children how to have Um, a healthy understanding of frustration and why it's important. And also for those who are leaders who are um, in churches and ministries or even business, how do you teach your employees and those under your care that frustration is a natural part of the process of growing? So we're going to talk about that at the inner circle. That's right. And if you want to join that, you'll hear about it at the end of the episode. That's right. So let's jump on into it. Before we uh, talk about the science problem, let's redefine deconstruction because without uh, a definition without agreeing on terms and what are you arguing about? What are you even talking about? Right. So uh, deconstruction, uh, the, the definition that we came up with last week, mm-hmm. it was a method of critical analysis of philosophical and literary language, which emphasizes the internal work, internal, internal, the workings. internal workings <laughs> of language and conceptual systems, the relational quality of meaning and the assumptions implicit in forms of expression. That's right. crazy. That's that's a big definition, but it's not our definition. It's like the actual yeah. literal we're, we're definition of uh. it. <laughs> but I liked, you had mentioned what um, Dr. Eric Mason had said was, yes. was the definition of deconstruction in this context. Yeah, he was talking about, he's, he was doing a sermon series about it, but um, his definition was... Uh, formally evaluating your core beliefs, like reevaluating your core beliefs. Making it more personal, not just like the deconstruction of something, but it's like for you, what you are engaging in. Because it is something you engage in. It's a personal thing. Like we talked about last week, it's a personal problem. But it's something that you as a human being are involved in. It's not just something that passively happens to a thing. Exactly. And that's more of how it's commonly used anyway. Mm -hmm. When we talk about deconstruction in popular culture, uh, you've heard a lot of uh, former Christian artists You've heard a lot of uh, big name people maybe that have uh, discussed losing their faith or mm-hmm. they don't say losing faith anymore. It's deconstructing their faith. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, the way it is kind of presented is it's destroying or picking apart mm-hmm. the areas of your, your belief that you no longer believe yeah. because of whatever reason. And so yeah. today what we're talking about, that reason that a lot of folks that we've experienced, this isn't a blanket statement again, uh, but a lot of the experiences that we've had with folks who've deconstructed it's been because of this science problem. It's a, it's a problem. So, so what is the science problem? Well, I, it goes back to this really, it, it's this incredibly insightful film that I think every person should watch. It's, it's just full of, of gospel truth. What, and What that is? Uh, it's called Nacho Libre. <laughs> and I just think that it's <laughs> the really relevant. epic. I mean, they uh, think I don't Libre. know a buttload about the gospel, <laughs> but, but I, I do. I do. <laughs> anyway, you got to watch it. It's a hilarious movie. But one of the things that one of the characters says in the movie is he's like, I don't believe in God. I believe in science. He says a skeletal it, says that. Skeletal. Yes, he says it so like smug and like, I don't need that religious garbage. I have science on my side. Yes. And then, of course, the main character uh, played by Jack Black is continually trying to like, oh, come on. Like he, well, then he, like, he baptizes, he, he forced he, baptizes, like, forced him. baptizes him, which isn't cool. We don't do that. It's not, <laughs> that's not the gospel. But, um, but yeah. yeah, it's, it's this like 
juxtaposition to the conversation of like, well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't need anything else. See, I believe in science. Yeah. Yeah. There, that's uh, been consistently the argument against faith mm-hmm. is from a position of science. And so much so that there's been pseudoscience to combat science to try <laughs> to uh, justify some positions that the church holds. You got science to argue with your science? Well, it's pseudoscience. It's not even real science. It's like... Pretend science? Kind of science. It's like, eh, it's science-ish. You know what I mean? Like, it's science-like. Like, second cousin <laughs> to science. <laughs> um, twice removed. <laughs> and so, some of the bigger arguments that um, have come out, I, I don't know if you remember, it would have been seven, seven years or so ago mm-hmm. when a Bill Nye the Science Guy debated uh, oh, Ken yes. Ham. Ken Ham? Kevin Ham. Ken. Ken, Ken yeah, Ham, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, um, About creationism yeah. versus um, oh, yeah. Old evolution. Earth, young Earth. This has been an argument for a long time. Well, and now you have even more like controversial and like conspiracy theorists in the like flat earth debate. Yeah. It's like it, the, it like gets span, thrown in there. And they span the uber like religious and the uber atheistic. Which is crazy. Yeah. You have people for, anyway, but like you have, it's a pseudoscience. It's like yeah. way of understanding and interpreting the world. And it's mm-hmm. like, it's, it's you're either one or the other. Yeah. And it's like, it's crazy because I've always found, or at least at a certain point, I found that certain things about both mm-hmm. science and scripture would verify or bring more clarity to the other. It's yeah. like you read something in scripture and it's like, oh, wow, like that's incredible. And then you see something in science or it's in science. <laughs> you <laughs> like see it, it in like the it's, science. It's in the science Look world. Look at the science. So, but you see it in nature yeah. occurring a certain way. It's like, oh, wow. Like, that's what God meant. And even though in scripture it may be worded poetically mm-hmm. or in a way that's like, that's not literally what it is, but here I see what that is meant to represent in yeah. the natural world. And it's like, in some regards, people have like thrown off this, again, nuance, which is a word we use in the last episode. They've thrown exactly. off the nuance of like seeing these things work synergistically and said, nope, nope, it's either God or science, either the word of God or the word of this one person who said this one thing a long time ago. It's either Darwin or <laughs> Abraham. I don't know. It's well, weird. I think there's talking about nuance. I think we want a simplistic answer. And we talked about that yep. again um, in the previous episode, but mm-hmm. we're, we're so in, ingrained into desiring simple and simplistic answers that yeah. we don't think about this understanding that, that God can be the God of science. Right. Like God is bigger than science. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's been so many debates that have, come up you've got genealogical records in scripture versus Mm -hmm. carbon dating you've got old earth Mm -hmm. versus new or young earth right yeah you've got these these schools of thought that say i can't comprehend scripture being taken any other way but literal and then Mm -hmm. you have these other schools of thought that says well if scripture has anything in it that contradicts um the the known and accepted and tested scientific understanding in the scientific community then all of scripture has to be wrong and yeah and there's this weird like either or that that we don't have to accept as christians yeah well and we don't we don't accept it in any other regard like we don't no. say oh well this one thing happened a thousand times in a row in nature but this one time it didn't happen well we don't we don't suddenly throw out everything else we don't we don't throw out the baby with the bathwater in no. that case but for some reason when it comes to the word of god as opposed um as it exists for the christian belief mm-hmm. we want to do that and also, yeah. I will say, like, this whole taking things literally, I, I, I really have a frustration with that, like, over-application of the literal interpretation of Scripture. Mm-hmm. I believe there are many things that we need to take literally. Yes. But I think the bigger problem is that we find so many Christians do not take it seriously. Come on. That's what I'm talking like, about. Like, you want so badly to argue about a literal six-day creation. Hey, that's fine. That's cool. You want it. That's great. Yeah, do your thing. But are you even concerned with the seriousness of the first six commandments like are we even thinking about that because we're so worried about well what am i teaching my children in this curriculum and i i've heard it so much in the homeschool community especially Mm -hmm. it's like if you don't teach your kids xyz and you're a christian homeschooler i mean you're 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 pretty you're pretty much you are pretty much raising heathens (laughs) if you do not teach them this young earth creationism and you don't teach them a court like and there's curriculum that i understand it it does take a little bit of stretching, I will say, in my own interpretation of the curriculum, it takes a little bit of stretching the imagination to try to get to some of those literal places. Yeah. And I think what people don't understand in, in this day and age, in our modern time, is that the history of these worldviews is it this is stemming back from 
a naturalism versus um, like creationism type, mm-hmm. not creationism, but like the spiritual understanding of like how God created the world versus naturalism that says only what I can see exists. Okay. And so, and this has been around yeah. since, since Darwin, right. Yeah. And, and Darwin brought about the understanding of um, survival of the fittest and evolution and all this. And so this, this mindset that says, okay, what I see, what I can measure, what I can, I can physically touch empirical data is all that exists. Mm. Like there is nothing beyond the, the physical, like that's a naturalistic worldview. And when you um, live out a naturalistic worldview, it tends to um, put you opposed to things of the spirit. Mm-hmm. And not just uh, the Christian understanding, but anyone that believes in anything beyond a physical, like manifestation, like so transcendent, like, yeah, any transcendent thought, consciousness. That's it. Morality, ethics, these things that mm. we know are real, but there are these explanations for them that that are based in the naturalistic worldview that are simply based on survival of the fittest. Mm. That honestly, I don't find compelling. I don't find them to be arguments that that give enough oomph. To be like, oh, yeah, that argument makes sense how morals and um, an understanding of right and wrong can come out of survival of the fittest. Well, and I think it's also that there's a weird like constant wanting to connect the animal kingdom to humanity. Yeah. And I think a lot of that. Because I, I, we're physical beings. Yes. Like, and we want to yeah. understand like, well, wait a minute. How, how do like it's natural to want to know how something comes into existence, mm-hmm. how certain species have similarities like all of these things that there are question marks surrounding so many of those things like the um the debate of like human beings coming from apes and all of that like there's so many things it's like wow it's fascinating that we can see these things in the natural world Mm -hmm. but yet what what we see in scripture doesn't there's nothing here spelled out that says that and so then how do we reconcile what we're seeing and one of the things that um It may be, I guess, a little mundane to say this, but um, we do live by faith, not by sight. That there's something about that truth that says I don't necessarily have to live everything out by what I see in front of me and what I can touch. Because if that were the case, then there would be no reason for us to have faith or hope. Because faith is the evidence of things hoped for and not yet seen. Mm -hmm. And so, like, all of this obsession that we that we have with like. If I can't see it, if it can't be proven, mm-hmm. if I can't find a formula for it and I can't watch it occur in nature without any manipulation from outside forces, then it can't be real. I think that really like it handcuffs us and it does place a great burden on the person trying to interpret something because it's like, well, then what do I do with those instances where there's something just so incredibly phenomenal? Like mm-hmm. we have a word for it, even in science, it's phenomenal. It's like, well, I don't even know how, I don't, can't even explain this. Yeah. Um, like it, it, it puts a lot of strain on the person trying to interpret that truth because there are some things that just can't be explained. When I think the, the purpose of the purpose of science is not to give us a why it's to mm-hmm. give us a how. And so when you look at science versus faith or science versus uh, scripture, um, they're operating really in two, not two separate realms as in God doesn't enter into science but they're answering two separate questions mm, and good. there, there've been historically in the church, there have been brilliant minds who were um, sold out for Jesus, loved Jesus, believed in scripture as being the, the word, the Holy spirit inspired word of God that still um, explored the scientific world in mm-hmm. ways that brought about um, all sorts of stuff, advancement in science. If you yeah. look at um, now he's more of a philosopher, but like St. Thomas Aquinas, mm-hmm. he had like, he entered into, uh, this intellectual space with his faith. It wasn't a thing where he's like, okay, I'm going to check my faith at the door and I'm going to walk into this, <laughs> this space here. No, he like, he's like, listen, God is the God of all truth. And I think that's something that we forget in the church. Mm-hmm. We forget that God is the God, like we have the capital T truth. Yeah. And so we can't be afraid of little, little T truths. Mm-hmm. And there are so many times where we get caught up in these little arguments of, of, debating um like the small things the yeah. the small scientific developments of like hey did you know that they carbon dated this footprint back you know 10 billion years or, or whatever i don't know numbers it's some big <laughs> number right like and then people are like no that can't be because the word says genealogically that it's only been 6000 years right. and it's like listen why are you afraid of like anything outside that that challenges your understanding of maybe the scripture maybe the phenomenological language in scripture or maybe the poetic mm. language in scripture wasn't meant to be taken literally. Maybe yeah, like a day there, age. Yeah. There's, day all, an age, there's yeah. interpretation. There's, there's mm-hmm. nuance. There's, there's room for diversity of thought 
as long as we understand the who did it in scripture, mm-hmm. right? The who done it. Mm, um, it's yeah. not so much about how, and we're going to get into more about that in uh, the next episode where we, yeah. we dive into scripture. Yeah. But um, I think we can't as Christians like try to pigeonhole ourselves into trying to answer every question that science can think of. Yeah. Like one thing is for certain is that we have to be able to um, know that, that God is behind it all mm-hmm. and be able to hold the truth of God's word um, up to whatever scrutiny that, that comes yeah. and not be afraid of someone being like, well, it says that the earth or the sun rises mm-hmm. and we know that the sun doesn't rise. So therefore yeah. scripture can't be taken seriously. It's like, no, I'm not pitting <laughs> science against this poem. Like right. that's not how we do things. You wouldn't right. do that with Robert Frost, right? <laughs> you wouldn't, you, you know what I mean? Like we're not going to do that with. Quoth the raven. <laughs> That is not Raven. Ravens don't quote. Yeah, there's no that is way. scientifically incorrect. So I'm never going like to read the Edgar that, Allen. That's like the debate they tried to have about Ariel being a, a person of color when they were yes. going to film it. They're like, well, scientifically speaking, <laughs> Ariel could not be of color. And someone's like, scientifically speaking, mermaids. Crabs can't talk. Crabs can't. So you, you can't have a symphony happening underwater with animals talking. Like you're cool with this, with this crab having a Jamaican accent. But, but you don't not- want Ariel to be like. <laughs> There's some things that it's just interesting how our brains will like lock onto something. And I think yeah. when it comes to scripture and science and this, this um, ongoing debate that happens of like trying to prove one or disprove mm-hmm. the other, um, I think it's really good as a person, whether you are on the side of which I don't think anyone should be on either side of it, but whether you're more oriented towards science or more oriented towards scripture, whichever orientation you have. No there judgment. we go. Um, <laughs> You, I think you have to ask yourself, what is my purpose for mm. wanting this interpretation? Like, what is yeah. the purpose I have? Because I what, think what answer is this providing me that I'm yearning exactly. for? Exactly. Like when it comes yeah. to those who reject science, who say it's only the literal interpretation of scripture and only the literal, literal interpretation of scriptures that I choose, mm-hmm. mind you. Um, why? Why is that? What? I, I would question to say, well, what are you trying to control in this situation? Yeah. What interpretation are you trying to mold someone else to have? Because usually those those comments are made in um, a situation where someone's teaching someone else or being questioned by someone else and it's someone in authority. So like, what are you trying to control about mm-hmm. this person's interpretation of scripture? For the scientific side of it, same thing. What are you trying to control or what are you trying to remove from someone's peripheral so they only see the objective thing that you want them to see based on this scenario. Like, yeah, I, I always wonder like, well, what do you stand to get out of it? If this person disagrees with you on this, what are you losing? If they agree with you on this, what do you feel that you're gaining from that? And in the end, like not seeking to change another person's view of either. It's, it's really hard though. Cause it's that's, like, I want you to see it my way. <laughs> that's a good. So that reminds me of, of a class I took on the book of Luke. We're talking about the theology of Luke. And a lot of times Luke is looked at as a history. I'm going to get to the science part. Stay with me. Um, (laughs) Luke is looked at as a history. And so this whole class that I took, we were discussing what's the theology of Luke. Like, Mm -hmm. even though he has all of this historical context, what's his theological bend? What's, what is he trying to get at? And um, uh, A.W. Tozer is quoted as saying, what you believe about God is the most important thing about you. So wrapping all this up together. Um, your point of view about this science versus religion is going to say something theologically about Mm. how you view the world, whether or not you find yourself to be a religious or theological or irreligious. And a lot of times when you're, when you're entering into the, into this debate, um, a question that I've heard asked is how much proof is needed for you to admit that you could be wrong Mm. on either side. That's good. Like if this, if I was able to give you all of this proof saying that you're not correct, would you yield and would you change your mind? And nine times out of 10, most people are like, no, yeah. even if you said everything that I believed and you showed me proof, even then, because at, at your core, you have some sort of, some sort of belief that is central to your identity, mm-hmm. some sort of belief that, that you've based your whole worldview on. Yeah. And, and that's what you're defending. Yeah. And a lot of times mm-hmm. um, in deconstructing a faith, and this doesn't happen all the times, because I know someone's like, that's not what happened to me. But there's a wound, there's an injury, yep. whether it's um, emotional, psychological, intellectual, there's something that happens that challenges a pre under pre preconceived, um, preconceived thank you, preconceived notion, uh, a pre accepted understanding of the worldview. Um, and something's challenged where there's no foundation. Mm. And once that that doubt is put there, or once that fear 
that, wow, I believed that, or I believe this person. And now all this stuff is, is shaken. Mm-hmm. So now I have to grab onto the one thing that I, I did find that was true, which was this scientific fact. Yeah. And I'm going to use this as my base to deconstruct all this other stuff wow. because I was lied to mm. because I was frustrated about because, and it, it puts you in a place where the question you asked, like, what are you trying to prove either yeah. way? Yeah. Like, are you seeking truth? If you are seeking truth, capital T truth, mm. um, then, then wouldn't truth lead you to believe whatever it presents? Yeah, that's good. I think honestly, the, the way you're describing that really reminds me of the garden. I, I, I've said this so many times, like everything I, I see it when I break it down to its bare essentials, break it down now, it goes back to the garden Yeah, because when Eve was tempted, Mm-hmm. As the story goes, like what we read and what we tend to look at and say, okay, well, Eve was tempted by the serpent. The serpent made her do it. Then she gave it to her husband and he blamed it on her. But really there was a seed of a thought planted in Eve that mm-hmm. somehow God's keeping something from you. That's right. Yeah. And it, that's all it took was for that one little seed of like doubt to then fracture that relationship and fracture that truth that she was born into, that she was living in relationship that's all it took was one little seed of doubt. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we see trying to cover up. They're, they tried to like hide themselves and they, they yeah. hid themselves from God. And justification. And, and yes, justifying like, well, I only did it because of this. And I did it because of the woman you gave me. And um, <laughs> you said it. That. We still do that. We still do that. God only um, did this because you put me in this position. But it's crazy how we will hide ourselves in religious jargon we will mm-hmm. hide ourselves in irreligious in, jargon yes we will hide ourselves in scientific reasoning mm-hmm. because we are hiding from the fear of of punishment for whatever it is or we're hiding from the fear of rejection we're hiding from the fear of something um that i i believe is is oftentimes rooted in pride as well mm-hmm. but there's that fear that drives us to hide ourselves in something mm, that's and good. with science and science is amazing this is the yeah. crazy trick of the enemy like Science is, is beautiful and it testifies to the glory of God. Like you look at, you read the Psalms and you read the literature and the poetic richness Mm -hmm. of scripture. Science testifies to God's truth and to the transcendence of his goodness um, on this earth. But yet the enemy twists it and tries to tell us that what we can do is then manipulate that scientific reasoning to be our God or to right. be the thing that rules our understanding of what is good. And so then we become the worshipers of the creation That's right. rather than the creator. And so it's, it's ever so Which the slight. word kind of speaks about. Yeah. And, and, I'm not, and, and again, I'm not saying that science is the enemy or science no, is the devil. Not. I'm saying it's, it's, it's twi- the devil. <laughs> it's the devil. But I'm saying it, it, the twisting of it is ever so slight. And all it takes is one little seed of doubt. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy that oftentimes people who um, side with science Mm-hmm. Well, again, placing themselves on the intellectual um, upper high, hand, the high, about, ground. the high ground. Um, and then Christians oftentimes will inadvertently place ourselves in this unintellectual viewpoint where it's like we are anti-intellectual. We do not believe anything unless yeah. it comes from the word of God. And, and the, it's dangerous on both sides. Like I think yeah. it, it ends up yeah. being this like we're on such far opposite ends of where we need to be to understand and hear each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's those of us in the middle who are like, wait a second, guys, they hear me. Science <laughs> is good. And the word of God is true. Like let's just yes. meet in the middle and have a good time. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. But. It was good though. I was there with you. I, I went <laughs> along for the ride and I'm glad I did. I'm a better person because of it. <laughs> no, I think, um, First off, before we go any further, if, if you're getting any value from this, please subscribe, yeah. uh, share this with somebody, let somebody know about uh, the podcast. Comment, uh, ask a question, comment some. on something we're we'll, saying. We'll engage. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I want to point out uh, is you, you talked about the anti-intellectual position versus the intellectual position. Mm-hmm. Like as Christians, y'all, we got to stop taking anti-intellectual ground. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't win anyone. Mm-hmm for the gospel. Because if, just think about this believer, think about this. If you're telling someone, I have the answer to your eternal salvation. And then they turn around and they're like, Hey, how do you feel about, um, you know, DNA, the, the human genome? And you're like, mm. Oh, I'm not even going to touch that because my God knit me together in, in my mother's womb. Like with needles. Like, so how can I believe you on things eternal when you can't even address like basic truths that are, are natural. And even Paul says like, 
how can you how can you think spiritual when you're you're mm-hmm. so caught up in in mm-hmm. the nonsense right so it's like science in and of itself is a means to understand the world yeah so given that science has a has limits it has boundaries mm. it's exhaustible it's, it's exhaustible the the word of god speaks to the human condition it speaks to how we relate to our creation or creator and how we relate to creation. It, mm-hmm. it speaks to who we are. And again, we're going to get into the word of God um, in another, in the next episode, but the word itself, uh, part of the reason that um, people debate the word of God versus science is they misunderstand what an errant means. Oh and they yeah. That's a hot word. That's a, it, that's a buzzword. It's a buzzword because trigger <laughs> there's, there's so much baggage around the word inerrant saying because the Bible it's is, been used. It has been used. I believe abusively almost like to Mm -hmm. to shut people down in their questioning of things of the lord Mm, that's true yeah and and to reinforce anti-intellectualism yes yes because um when you think about the the roots of the word inerrant comes from like the fundamentalist movement where it's like Mm -hmm. um back in like the niagara convention i can't remember the year but they're like listen the word of god everything it says is true nothing it says can ever be false but that stance doesn't, again, take into consideration poetic language. It doesn't take mm-hmm. into consideration phenomenological language. Yeah. Like, so you're saying the eyes of the Lord are physically walking the earth, searching to that and fro? That would be so creepy. Like you're saying that literally there are Literally eyeballs. two giant eyeballs are just walking around. Do they have legs? Or are they just floating are around? They floating? Uh, like Veggie Tale style. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to, <laughs> like, you have to understand when, when we as believers, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for, uh, believers rooted in the the media via uh, mm. in the John Wesleyan tradition specifically, but even in other traditions who are, understand that there's a middle road that we don't take extreme sides, like kind of uh, like Jesus, right? Those of us who follow the Lord, uh, <laughs> when we say the word is an errant, we mean the things in Scripture teach you without a doubt how to please the Lord, how to live life to the fullest, how to live a mm-hmm. a God honoring life, right? And it will not lead you astray in those things, right? Um. And, and that the, the word doesn't lack anything when it comes to showing you how to find fullness of life in God. Yeah, you have to know the purpose. And exactly. like, this is all stuff we're like, oh, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. I, but chomping at the bit over Like, here. the thing is, you don't go, when you, okay, here's the thing. This tell, is the tell thing. Us the thing. I want to know it. When your car breaks down mm-hmm. on the side of the road. Yep. And you're like, ah, oh, what should I do? Like, what am I going to do with my car? Do you open up the Bible to figure out What's wrong with your car? Some people do. Some no, people do. You open up the Bible to say, Lord, I need your guidance. Lord, please send me somebody. Like, I know no, what you open the Bible you're, for. You're right. But you also don't open up a science textbook. Okay. The answer, like, there are some things that we experience in life as part of the natural process of life as mm-hmm. human beings on this earth. That You know what? I'm not just going to go to a science textbook and find the answer. I'm also sure. not going to go to scripture and find the literal answer that I need to fix this problem. Now, can I find hope? Mm -hmm. Can I find an understanding of a process? Yes, I can find that in science and I can find that in scripture. That's right. But we have to stop pitting these things against each other. We have to stop saying, well, if it's not science, it's nothing. If it's not, if I can't find the, if I can't find where I'm going to find my husband in the word of God, then I'm (laughs) not reading it. The actual location. The actual, I need the GP. (laughs) If it ain't got the longitude and latitude. God didn't drop the pin. (laughs) In the Bible, in my Bible app, I'm not, I'm not reading it. That's right. That's because that's what the word of God is inexhaustible. So it needs to tell me where my man is. Um, so this, this whole argument, again, we, we don't have time to go into uh, any really further depth. Um, but you have to know as a believer, we, we don't, we don't need to be afraid of science. And if you're somebody who has been utilizing um, this, this naturalism worldview versus the uh, spiritualistic worldview, um, specifically the Christian worldview, if you've been using that as an argument to deconstruct your faith, one thing I want you to know is that these arguments have been happening for literally hundreds of years. And that, if not more. Yeah, and you can go <laughs> back and read any argument that you're coming up with in your brain, like, but what about the flat earth? I don't know if you talk like that, but that's just the voice <laughs> that came in my head. Um, there are arguments from brilliant Christians and mm-hmm. brilliant scientists, brilliant people who have debated this. I've got a book right here. Uh, which one is it? One of these. God's universe. Uh, no, this oh. one right here, science, science, evolution, and religion. It's, it's a debate. It's a book about these two brilliant scientists. One's a Christian, one's not. And they're just talking about this, the truth of the naturalistic world and what it points to beyond what they can see. Mm. And so I would, I would encourage you to go read some stuff. Don't just, well, I feel like this is wrong. 
I feel like death in the Old Testament is wrong. And so I can't believe in a God that would kill people. Go back, actually watch our episode about that, about murder in the Old Testament. Mm, yeah, it's a um, good episode. Because there's, there's things about the nature of God that the church has discussed and has prayed about and has explored for thousands of years, mm-hmm. literally, that you can tap into that richness of history yeah. and, and the knowledge base. You can stand on the shoulders of giants. You don't have to figure this out on your own. <laughs> um, and you don't have to just sit there with your questions in your, in your basement and mm-hmm. you know, your, your Greek lexicon and be like, ah, I found a word I don't like. So therefore mm. that this whole Christian thing's out the window. Um, let's actually engage in the history that's there. Yeah. And I, I would say also, I would re- try to remember that most of the arguments um, that happen don't change people's minds. Come on. The argument, argumentativeness of a topic does not determine whether or not it's going to actually make a difference. That's right. Uh, the difference happens in the engaging with people and being willing to listen mm-hmm. and being willing to stand firm in your own conviction. Say, look, I hear you. Um, this is where I stand, but I'm going to listen. And that's one of the things that we found has been more productive in this conversation is not, um, holding it over someone's head and it, uh, like the term, like uh, the Bible thumper, like mm-hmm. holding it over someone's head and saying, you have to believe this. You have to believe this because as Christians, we're not doing any service to people by, by teaching them. They have to just take our word for it. That's right. It's not our word. They have to take for it. That's it. And we have to give room. We have to allow the Holy spirit to work in people and to do what he's been doing from the very beginning, which is hovering and, and, uh, watching over the chaos and then moving in the midst of the depths of it. Sorry, so you were good. about to laugh at me. Oh, no, I was laughing about, because I was thinking about the literal eyeballs walking around. <laughs> and spirit hovering. <laughs> here's a, just one more bit of encouragement. Um, if you are in a relationship as a believer with someone who's, who's walking through this process of deconstruction, um, and just to, oh, sorry, just to copy or to, to piggyback off what Kylie just said, you're not going to argue them out of that. You're not going to debate them into a place where they're like, oh, yeah, I see the error of my ways. <laughs> um, but one thing that you can never debate is loving someone. Mm. And I don't mean this as generic, like just have good vibes towards them, but actually want what's best for them. Serve them. Like maybe don't even make that the center of your conversation. Um, mm. Just seek ways to to connect with them on a deeper level, to love them through their stuff, to walk with them, even if they're walking away from the faith, you as the uh, physical, tangible body of Christ you can still love them where they are mm-hmm. because that's what Jesus did for us. And so oh. don't, don't get drawn into the argument. Don't, don't make it about that. And yes. um, if you want to be a member of our inner circle, I just want to say this before we close, mm-hmm. um, go to www.patreon.com slash Nick Smith podcast. And you can find out more about how you can get extra content, how you can uh, learn about cool merch like this awesome mug we got. <laughs> um, actually, we don't even sell these anymore. So oh, yeah, if you run in the inner don't. circle, you missed out on that. Um, we've got other ones. So, yes. um, yeah, go there and find out about that. Yes. Yeah, so and make sure that you comment below, like, and subscribe for That's your right. weekly dose of living truth. And, um, if you want to be a part of that inner circle, again, we are going to have some extra content coming up soon. We're going to talk about the frustration tolerance That's that right. we all need to cultivate and we coming all need up. to have. And so we really want you to be a part of that. Make sure that you sign up. It's just like a dollar a month. It's nothing. Not that, not that like big that. of a deal. It's like less than a coffee, right? That's oh. what we're supposed to tell you. So we would love to have you as a part of that. And this has been the Nick Smith Podcast. We hope that this episode has connected you to living truth. Be, Be blessed. blessed.